Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a review of the Red Sea Trace Colors program. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about my experiences of uh, dosing uh, the Red Sea's Trace Colors program, uh, their supplements A, B, C, and D. Uh, these supplements are meant to uh, supply the tank with uh, trace elements that improve uh, uh, coral coloration. So in, in total, the product claims to uh, provide 31 minor elements, uh, which includes halogens, uh, iodine, bromide, potassium, uh, iron and 18 bioactive trace elements. Uh, I was uh, curious about this. I, I did do a, a Triton test uh, a while back, I think in January, so you know, more than a year, uh, more than a, well, actually a little bit less than a year ago. And uh, I, I did, uh, my system was low on, uh, on several of the trace elements, although I, I did have uh, high levels of iodine and high levels of potassium. Uh, so I, w I was kind of curious as to whether whether my system could benefit from this. Uh, I, I will let you know that uh, I used a uh, I used a very cheap uh, salt. Uh, it's the the regular instant ocean. So uh, I thought that perhaps because I, I'm not using an enriched salt, uh, I'm not using a salt that's specifically designed for like SPS reefs, for example. Uh, I thought that perhaps I might benefit uh, from uh, the application of uh, trace elements. Uh, I uh, I will uh, send you a link to uh, uh, my video uh, of uh, that summarizes my husbandry and and my major parameters, so that way you know what my uh, tank is uh, is like. Because you know I I, I think that obviously uh, uh, your 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 need for trace elements will depend on your system and 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 whether it's a high nutrient system and a low nutrient system. Uh, so my tank is a high nutrient system, so I, I wasn't sure whether I would benefit from uh, the trace colors, presumably because I feed heavily, then perhaps uh, that my tank is already getting the trace elements from uh, my feeding regime. But anyway, I, I thought, you know, I, I ran about this product and, and, and I thought it might be fun to try it out. So I, I uh, tested out for a period of six weeks, and I'm going to show you uh, pictures of my corals before and after the six week uh, experiment with, with the product. And, and that way you could judge for yourself whether there was uh, a big difference or not. Uh, so uh, I, I wanted to kind of keep track of two things. One is obviously the corals themselves and, and whether they colored up or not. But also I wanted to keep track of the water chemistry because uh, there is a disclaimer uh, with the Trace Elements products is that they are they can result uh, in uh, a nutrient overload and their best use. So Red Sea recommends that you use them with the uh, Nopox product, which is uh, which is part of their carbon dosing. So uh, it, it, it it's something that I definitely kept track of just to make sure that uh, the chemicals that I'm adding are not going to overwhelm my system. Uh, so uh, uh, for my for my tank, I, I there is two ways to could you could actually dose the trace elements. One is you could uh, measure the uh, iodine, potassium, and, and iron and dose accordingly. Or there is an easy dose way where if you could figure out how much your calcium you uh, your tank uses, how much calcium that your tank uses uh, per day, uh, then you could uh, dose uh, use a, a simple calculator to figure out how much of every chemical you need to to dose, and that, and that's what I did. So I did the math on my system, and I figured out that I will have to dose uh, 0.6 mils of every trace elements. Uh, uh, for uh, every day, so I, I actually did that manually, and you know it. it I was I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I thought that it, the manual dosing was going to be uh, annoying and 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 uh, time consuming, but you know it it wasn't a big deal. I actually got these like eyedropper bottles, and and I was able to uh, every morning when I feed my tank to uh, add the four chemicals, and you know it didn't take more than a couple of minutes to do those. So it's it's not a big deal to dose them manually. Okay, so let's uh, look at, uh, I'm going to first show you what uh, dosing did to my uh, water chemistry, and then I'm going to show you uh, the pictures of my SPS corals, and then we're going to have uh, a little discussion at the end about whether these products work for me, and uh, and if not, then, then uh, what are the reasons that uh, I didn't get the results that I was expecting. 
Okay guys, so uh, I wanted to show you uh, my water chemistry during this test. So uh, my alkalinity uh, over the test period, so I, uh, I started around second week of September, um, it was fairly stable, you know, around 7 to, uh, or most of the time it's around 7.7. .7. Uh, my calcium was fairly stable. Let's uh, go back here. Again, over the test period, anywhere between 435 to 425, so pretty stable. Uh, magnesium has been steadily dec declining, but I, I don't think that's uh, uh, related to... Uh, I don't think it was related to uh, using the product at all. Uh, I think it's uh, I stopped dosing uh, the ESV magnesium, uh, and uh, just over time the magnesium has dropped. Uh, so uh, where I I wanted I was really curious. What I was really curious about is how the, the Red Sea colors were uh, going to influence nitrate and phosphate. Uh, so nitrate actually remained really stable over. Uh, over this test period so you know it's bang on around 10 uh, uh, I no no major changes whatsoever uh, where I did see a change was in my phosphate so uh, let's let me just uh, zoom in here okay uh, so when I started when I started the dosing uh, you know I, w I was in a low phosphate stage uh, and from let's say the second week the third week of september uh, my phosphate went from 0.1 uh, to when i stopped the test it was 0.24 now because i tested actually i just tested once at the start and once at the end it's it's really hard to know whether this spike was caused by the dosing the trace colors or or whether this this just because uh, you see before I started using this product I still I sometimes my phosphates would go up uh, to uh, 0.2 so it, it's hard to tell whether this, whether this is cause and effect or whether uh, this is just my my uh, fluctuate typical fluctuations of phosphates in my tank uh, what's telling is that the uh, when I stopped dosing the trace colors on the 26 and uh, I tested a week later on November 2nd it did drop from 0.24 to 0.16 suggesting that maybe this elevated phosphate was actually uh, caused by uh, dosing the trace colors uh, it's important to note that uh, if you actually read the instructions on the Red Sea trace colors they do mention that uh, that using the uh, using the chemicals can actually result in spikes in uh, in nutrients, and they do recommend using the trace colors as part of their complete package, which includes dose, uh, carbon dosing using NOPOX. So I think I think they suspect that these chemicals, or they know that these chemicals, will boost uh, nutrient levels, uh, and and they recommend that you use them in conjunction with a carbon dosing method. For me, my my uh, uh, my nitrates and phosphates are typically. Uh, uh, in in the high range right so uh this is since july and you could see they've most of the time they're above 0.1 and in many cases they're they're between 0.1 and 0.2 uh all right so that's it in terms of uh, notable changes in water chemistry uh when i was uh, dosing this product so did dosing the colors uh, the trace colors program actually have an effect on colors of my sps mm -hmm. so i took a picture of each one of my colonies before starting uh, dosing and after uh, uh, about a month and uh, after the treatment was done which was I think about uh, six six weeks in total so we're gonna go through uh, each Acropora one by one and uh, and I'll show you the pictures and uh, and we're gonna try to figure out whether there is any improvement so uh, my first colony the Red Sea uh, sorry the uh, aura birds of paradise oh, sorry my bad uh, this is the aura red planet i mean so you can see that there's new growth here uh, this white bit is actually a frag that I, uh, I i cut off this little frag for uh for a fellow reefer uh, so you see the colony got bigger but there is no obvious change in color so i'm gonna i'm gonna call this the same no no change uh, second colony we're gonna look at uh, is my uh, uh, blueberry wine and again, you see signs of, of growth here, right? So you look at uh, these branches are obviously bigger, but for all intents and purposes, if you look at the color, it looks the same. So uh, I don't think uh, uh, the trace colors had an effect on this uh, uh, Acropora. 
uh, here we have the pink Cadillac and I think for the pink Cadillac you know maybe maybe there was a positive change you, you're you're seeing a little bit more vibrant uh, purple and a little bit uh, more interesting greens here uh, this is the after shot this is the before shot so I think I think maybe it made a difference for the pink Cadillac although it is subtle at best right you know if you look at these two pictures that you, you this one the after picture is not you know amazing it's not that much be better than this one uh let's what's next this is the bonsai uh before and after and again you see more growth here uh but no big change in color so i would say that's the same for the cali tort again you notice growth over that one month period but no big changes in color or a theme is emerging here uh, we have here the orange passion again the colony got bigger over the test period but no objective change in color I mean I, th I think this picture looks at just a tad bit nicer but I think it's just that the just random exposure right you, you see the greens the greens and, and the pinks are just a little bit stronger in the after picture than the before picture uh, so I, I would say the color of the passion the orange passion has stayed the same here is my green slimer before and after and it looks about the same no major changes uh, this is the aura blue voodoo and the, the picture looks a little bit the, the after uh, the after picture looks a little bit nicer but i think it was just uh this picture was a little bit uh overexposed uh because uh when i when i shot it i got the the glare from the radion here so I, I, looking at this colony in person, it actually doesn't look like there it's improved uh, at all, and and if if there is some improvements, it's it's pretty slight. Here is my uh, uh, my uh, electric tort, and you know I, this it's it's I I didn't want to actually put this picture because it 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 did look uh, uh, the colony the after picture looks a little bit nicer. But remember, this colony was actually in a in a bad spot. It browned out, so it, it, it and it was on its way on recovering. So uh, I can't. I don't know whether this recovery was uh, is caused by the trace colors or or whether it was just natural recovery. Because if I look, if I compare this picture from a month ago to the picture from two months ago, I still see a change, and that's before dosing the trace colors. Uh, what's next here we have the uh, Acropora tenuous uh, the blue green tenuous and again I'm not noticing I mean I'm seeing growth for sure but I'm not noticing a big change in the colors uh, here we have the aura birds of paradise this is not an Acropora this is a, a bird's nest coral and again I'm noticing growth but no big changes in color this is the Reef Raft Pac-Man uh, before and after and again growth but no big change in color. And finally uh, this is the uh, Cold Water Acro and yeah, maybe maybe I'm seeing a little bit more fluorescence here in the after picture than in, than in the before picture uh, but, it, but it's subtle. So I think in total, if you look at over the 14 pictures that I just showed you, uh, I would say that there was, for the most part, no big changes in the color of my Acropora. Uh, maybe for the uh, pink Cadillac, maybe for the cold water Acro, but I, I wouldn't, I, you know, it's pretty subtle. It, it's, it's really subtle. It, it's, not, uh, it's not a big boost in color that is really noticeable you kind of have to uh, <laughs> look hard to see any differences. So overall, I would say my conclusion is from this test is that dosing the trace colors did not substantially change uh, the colors of my Acropora in my system. Okay, so as you could see, I really didn't see much of an improvement from dosing the Red Sea uh, colors program. So uh, I'll caveat this by obviously that, you know, this is just my experience of dosing these chemicals in my tank. Uh, your experience will be different uh, depending on what kind of system you run and and uh, and whether uh, you're you're actually uh, seeing a depletion of trace elements. So in in my system, I saw no obvious benefits. 
uh, and I have a couple of ideas of why this is the case. So uh, the first major idea is that you know I do have a high nutrient system, and and my high nutrients is uh, comes from essentially uh, doing a lot of feeding. Uh, I'm and I'm mostly uh, I am mostly feeding uh, corals. Uh, sorry, I'm mostly feeding the fish. I, I don't actually actively feed corals, with the exception of running this experiment. Uh, so one idea is that. Uh, I am essentially supplying all of the trace elements uh, uh, that my corals need uh, just by feeding my fish. Uh, so that, that's one, one idea. Uh, the other idea is that uh, perhaps that because I'm doing uh, water changes every week, uh, I, I do a small water change of about uh, five gallons per week, uh, uh, that I am just naturally supplementing the trace elements uh, uh, through water changes. Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical about the idea because, again, I, I am using the cheapest instant ocean salt, uh, which uh, doesn't tend to be high in, in, uh, in, and it doesn't tend to be high in like things like iodine and potassium, and it also doesn't claim to contain a lot of trace elements. Uh, so it, it could be that, it could be that uh, it, you know, but it, it could be that my demands for trace elements are, are low or that their that water changes plus the feeding is, is meeting that demand. Uh, a third idea is that maybe these trace elements are really helpful in an ultra no, low nutrient system where where you're using no pox or carbon dosing uh, to really strip the water of all nutrients and 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 this is where like the the trace elements then helps replenish this i think that's one problem of the ultra no, low nutrient systems is you spend a lot of money on chemicals to try to kind of remove all nutrients from the water and then you spend a lot of money on chemicals to add more nutrients to the water it it, it it's it seems kind of counterintuitive and 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 perhaps uh, a waste of resources to remove nutrients and then with a bottle of chemicals and add nutrients with four different bottles of chemicals uh, but you know that this is just my thoughts on uh, on the matter uh, let me know if, if you've had experiences with uh, positive experiences or negative experiences with uh, dosing the uh, trace color programs from Red Sea or, or any other uh, uh, manufacturer. Uh, for me, I, I just I felt like uh, it, there was uh, there was little benefit, so I'm, I'm not going to continue dosing these chemicals because I just saw no uh, no results. Uh, I, this may change maybe perhaps when my uh, acropora colonies get bigger than they are now and, and they're really stripping the water of the trace new, uh, elements and perhaps there, there will be a time where uh, I'll need to supplement uh, my trace elements but for now I, I just don't think I need it. Alright, thank you so much for watching and I uh, hope to see you soon. Have a good one.